Hi, this is Chuck with Nerd3D. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at render settings for Superfly, specifically the pixel sample setting. This is the most important setting to get a quality render from Superfly. We're not going to look at adaptive sampling, well, that'll be covered in a different tutorial. And for now, we're going to turn off branch path tracing so we can just kind of focus on exactly what happens with pixel samples. Now, this number of pixel samples, four, may be a little bit misleading. And let's do a quick render here so we can see what this looks like, because this is going to look pretty terrible. Now, what's happening with four pixel samples? It's not really taking four samples of each pixel. And let's zoom in on this a little bit and look at it a lot more closely. And let's pick on this hot pixel right here in the middle of the screen. When you have your pixel samples set to four, it's not really sampling it four times. It's actually really sampling it four by four, 16 times. So the numbers can be a little misleading and you can end up getting a lot more samples than you really expect to be getting. If you double the number, for example, if you set the number of pixel samples in Poser to be eight, you wouldn't be doubling the number of, number of samples, you'll be squaring the number of samples. So 8 times 8 isn't 16, it's 64. So when you're setting your pixel samples, keep that in mind that these numbers are actually going to be squared when they get used in the render engine. Now let's take a look at branched path tracing. Now the first thing to think about with branched path tracing is whether you even want it on. In most cases, branch path tracing is only going to work well if you're using a CPU render. If you're going to be doing a hardware render using your graphics card to produce the render, you probably won't want branch path tracing turned on. It uses a lot more memory and can cause your video card to run out of memory during a render, which causes the render to fail. What happens with branch path tracing is Whenever a camera ray hits a pixel and finds that it's a particular type of pixel, say for example, it's a diffuse, which almost everything is going to be, it's glossy, maybe it's got some transparency to it, perhaps it's subsurface scattered like skin usually is, volume, ambient occlusion, and even mesh lights are counted in this branch path tracing. Now, I'm going to set all of these to 1, except for the one that we really care about right now. Because we're doing skin, we care about the subsurface scattering on the skin. And something unexpected is going to happen again. When we branch path the tracing, and let's go back to this zoomed in picture of a pixel and how it gets divided up. When it hits a branch path, it doesn't just branch one time, it branches a whole bunch of times. So each pixel gets divided again. So your total samples is going to be much, much higher. It's going to be 4 times 4, which is 16, times 6 squared, because that's what our sample was here, times 6 squared, 36. That's a lot of samples. And this is actually going to take quite a while for this to render because we're actually throwing a lot of samples at that. So after quite a while rendering, this is the result we're going to get. And what has happened here is every time a ray hits the skin, it gets divided six ways into the subsurface scatter branch path tracing. Now normally we would have more than one set in each one of these paths, but I wanted to demonstrate to you what happens on just one of the branch paths. And as you can imagine, when you start adding more samples to each one of these, you start adding, adding a lot more render time. And that's where your adaptive sampling is going to come into play, because it will stop the render when it thinks it's had enough samples. Now we'll cover adaptive sampling in a different tutorial. 
I hope this helps you get started setting up your pixel samples for Superfly in Poser. Thanks for watching and have fun using Poser.